มสาระความรู้ก่อนคลายได้ที่ RSU วิสตอนทีวีทางระบบทีวีดาวเทียมหรือผ่านแอปพลิเคชัน RSU วิสตอนทีวีดาวน์โหลดแอปพลิเคชันได้ที่ Google Play และ App Store สวัสดีค่ะ Hello and welcome to ASEAN Challenge, the show show to give you the latest updates around your ASEAN block in two languages, English and Thai. I'm Rosalyn p a p e r w a n ครับสวัสดีครับตอนรับท่านผู้ชมนะครับเข้าสู่รายการ ASEAN Challenge นะครับรายการแบบ bilingual สองภาษานะครับทั้งเวอร์ชันภาษาอังกฤษแล้วก็ภาษาไทยนะครับรายการ ASEAN Challenge ก็จะนําเสนอเรื่องราวต่างๆที่น่าสนใจที่เกิดขึ้นรอบๆอาเซียนนั่นเองครับผมดรดันวัสาคริครับ Right and we have a very interesting uh, talk about the updates in solar mm-hmm. power around your ASEAN wow. block coming up. It seems with the AEC coming up soon, mm-hmm. ASEAN Economic Community, right. many countries are actually not only joining hands to integrate, but mm-hmm. are also trying to cut down costs exactly. in different aspects. And the Philippines is one prime example of showing how the country itself is moving toward alternative energy mm-hmm. and is actually being very Very successful in that endeavor. Right, and I think, and when we become the AEC, the consumption, the energy consumption in particular, will increase. So right. I think it's quite a, a good decision to try to find uh, the alternative alternative ways Indeed. of uh, you know getting more energy. And the solar uh, power is very interesting. Mm. Very much so. In the Philippines, let's go take a look at what they're doing so far. In the country, they have actually repackaged solar energy to make it a residential package into a residential package, and they're trying to transform solar energy into a usable kind of energy to actually cut down the cost. Cut down the cost. Hmm. ครับก็ในเรื่องของพูดถึงถ้าเป็นพลังงานแสงอาทิตย์เนี่ยนะครับไปดูที่ประเทศฟิลิปปินส์นะนะครับในช่วง ASEAN Around Us วันนี้เนี่ยน่าสนใจทีเดียวเพราะว่าเขามีการนํามาใช้กันอย่างจริงจังนะครับใช้พลังงานแสงอาทิตย์เพื่อให้เกิดประโยชน์กันอย่างจริงจังเลยแล้วก็ถือว่าอาจจะเป็นส่วนหนึ่งนะครับในการลดต้นทุนนะครับของการใช้ไฟฟ้าจากพลังงานอื่นๆนะครับโดยเฉพาะอย่างยิ่งในระยะยาวเนี่ยอาจจะดีมากๆเลย Right and according to the founder here the president of Solar Philippines Company he says the days of having to choose between business and environment are over the Philippines company here Solar Philippines has actually energized a shopping mall this is the second time the company has been able to do that the first one was last September mm-hmm. the Solar Philippines Company launched Launched a 700 kilowatt right. central mall Binyan solar project that powered the rooftop power plant in Southeast Asia. Well, rather, it used its own solar rooftop power plant mm-hmm. in Southeast Asia to do that. And now, this here is the world's biggest solar-powered mall. You just saw earlier, 1.5 megawatt. Well, rather, million. Megawatt solar facility. Now they have actually wow. created 5,760 solar panels. You saw earlier with 60 converters covering mm. more than 12,000 square meters right here. So wow. a lot of space, but a lot of energy. And that's uh, perhaps the good uh, word. Business and environment can go together now. Mm, right. น่าสนใจทีเดียวนะครับสำหรับเรื่องนี้ที่เกิดขึ้นในประเทศฟิลิปปินส์เพราะว่าที่ผ่านมาอาจจะมีหลายคนบอกว่าการทําธุรกิจกับการรักษาสิ่งแวดล้อมนี่เอ๊ะมันจะควบคู่กันได้หรือเปล่านะครับแต่ว่าตอนนี้เนี่ยนะครับการใช้แผงพลังงานแสงอาทิตย์หรือว่าตัวโซลาเซลล์นะครับเพื่อมาผลิตโซลาพาวเวอร์หรือว่าพลังงานจากแสงอาทิตย์เนี่ยนะครับก็ได้ถูกใช้ขึ้นอย่างจริงจังแล้วนะครับในประเทศฟิลิปปินส์นะครับโดยการสร้างนะครับแผงรับพลังงานเนี่ยนะครับสำหรับห้างสรรพสินค้าเลยนะครับถ้าพูดไปแล้วก็อาจจะเรียกได้ว่าเป็นห้างสรรพสินค้าที่ใช้พลังงานแสงอาทิตย์ที่ใหญ่ที่สุดในโลกนะครับ right. ก็สามารถผลิตได้ถึง 1.5 เมกะวัตต์เลยนะครับสำหรับการผลิตไฟตรงนี้โอ้โห mm, so huge that equivalent is pretty much like powering 2,000 Filipino homes right giving them the basic Power needs, mm. so the equivalent of 1.5 megawatt solar facility right here. So this is one of the country's 
biggest projects in solar energy. And according to the executive, he says right. that this company, even the Philippines, has become the first local company here to make the first solar cost competitive, mm. make solar energy cost competitive rather um, with fossil fuel. So perhaps for the Philippines, with them being successful right. in changing and, and really transitioning over to solar mm -hmm. power usage, it would actually help them cut lots of uh, cut costs, for example. And um, well here they say with a team of 65 veterans from all the solar construction and power industries, mm -hmm. the company is growing very quickly. Right. And we don't have this kind of uh, solar powered mall yet in Thailand. No, not right, yet. Not yet, but in the future. Mm, never mm, know. Maybe. ก็ถ้าเปรียบเทียบนะครับว่ากําลังการผลิตไฟฟ้าของห้างสรรพสินค้าเนี่ยนะครับผลิตได้แค่ไหนที่บอกว่า 1.5 เมกะวัตต์เนี่ยก็ประมาณเท่าๆกับปริมาณไฟฟ้าที่ตามครัวเรือนฟิลิปปินส์ใช้ได้ถึงยี่ขอโทษนะครับ 2,000 หลังคาเรือนเลย2000 Filipino homes right amazing ถือว่าเยอะทีเดียวนะครับก็น่าทําให้ถือว่าเป็นห้างที่ผลิตสายไฟฟ้าได้เยอะที่สุดเลยตอนนี้ Right indeed <laughs> So this is a very big endeavor but uh, turning over to a smaller mm -hmm. you could say success but still success all the same Well we see that uh, very big malls are able mm -hmm. to actually use this uh, affordable and alternative solar right. energy One example of a smaller institution actually um, also modifying itself and accommodating solar energy is the Manuel Quezon University in wow. Manila. They are actually mm. turning to solar energy as well to cut costs and also power their buildings. So not just a, a business, but also schools, a schools university. Right. ครับท่านผู้ชมครับคือถ้าพูดถึงการใช้พลังงานแสงอาทิตย์นี่ก็ไม่ใช่เฉพาะตัวห้างสรรพสินค้านะครับที่ฟิลิปปินส์เท่าน
used uh, solar power energy for the first time. Well, they say that they can save 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide emission. Wow. That is an equivalent of 200,000 trees, planting 200,000 trees. Oh. How efficient is that? สุดยอดเลยครับท่านผู้ชมมาดูตัวเลขกันนิดนึงนะครับขอไปเป็นไทยให้ฟังนิดนึง <coughs> ในส่วนของการที่ย้อนกลับไปดูตัวห้างสรรพสินค้านะครับที่ชื่อว่า SM North e s s a เนี่ยนะครับที่เขามีโซลาร์เซลล์เต็มหลังคาเลยเนี่ยสามารถผลิตนะครับจำนวนเรื่องของไฟฟ้าเนี่ยทำให้นะครับการใช้โซลาร์เซลล์ตรงนั้นเนี่ยถือว่าเป็นการลดนะครับเทียบเท่ากับการลดปริมาณก๊าซคาร์บอนไดออกไซด์หรือหรือไอตัวคาร์บอนไดออกไซด์เอมิชันเนี่ยนะครับ4 0 0 0 0ตัน <coughs> 40,000 ตันนะครับหรือว่าถ้าจะเปรียบเทียบกันก็คือว่าเท่ากับต้องใช้การปลูกต้นไม้ถึง 200,000 ต้นว้าวนี่ครับลดไปได้เยอะทีเดียว so uh, that's very uh, environmental friendly yes very environmentally friendly and hopefully in the future we will see more malls and big institutions even smaller institutions yeah, around small ASEAN schools. right could actually also apply this technology and this uh, small investment for a mm -hmm. very positive long term outcome very sustainable right very sustainable indeed yep. with that said mm -hmm. some food for thought right there yep. And hopefully, we'll keep you posted on more successes in this nature in the future as well. Meanwhile, let's take a short break. Up ahead in ASEAN Challenge is ASEAN Hot Issue and Hot Topics are on your ASEAN block. Stay tuned. Welcome back to ASEAN Challenge into ASEAN Hot Issue. Yeah. Lots of interesting news ahead. Starting off with our very own Pattaya, the very uh, tourist attraction, right. attractive city mm -hmm. in Thailand. Lots of things are happening around there, especially the first week of December. In Pattaya, they have held a very interesting event here. It seems that 10,000 condoms were distributed mm. around the tourist hotspot, the tourist city in the red light district of Pattaya. The area is known to be a very um, hot spot for for you could say well the, of course the red light district and because of that lots of action had been taken to to promote safe sex on World AIDS Day and here you see lots of people dressed up accordingly mm. fancy dress parade here with everybody dressed up aiming to promote awareness of safe sex among wow. working girls and men who have sex with men did they dress in a, like a condom Condom light uh, uh, dress. Oh. Not yes. sure about that though. <laughs> mm, but very, very, look very uh, colorful. Very mm, colorful very indeed. Colorful. Very Fancy. lively. Fancy parade. <laughs> Giving out condoms. There you go. Uh, maybe we. With kids. <laughs> with kids. In the parade as well. Ch uh, so it's good for them. You know. It's good to start early, yeah. right? ในช่วงที่2นะครับของรายการอาเซียนชาเลนจ์ก็เป็นช่วงอาเซียนฮอร์ดิชูสนะครับก็มีหลากหลายเรื่องราวน่าสนใจที่เกิดขึ้นรอบๆอาเซียนนะครับมาดูเรื่องแรกที่บ้านเราก่อนเลยนะครับพัทยานั่นเองนะครับก็ได้ชื่อว่าเป็นเมืองท่องเที่ยวนะครับทัวริสอะไรก็ต้องมานะครับถือว่าเป็นมีแหล่งสถานท่องเที่ยวนะครับบันเทิงครบวงจรเลยที่พัทยานะครับแล้วก็ให้สอดคล้องกับกิจกรรมนะครับเนื่องในวันที่1ธันวาเนี่ยนะครับถือว่าเป็นวันเอดส์โลกเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยก็เลยมีกิจกรรมนะครับมีนักเรียนเจ้าหน้าที่สาธารณสุขนักกิจกรรมต่างๆเนี่ยเขาร่วมรณรงค์นะครับเดินพาเรดกันนะครับบนถนนเลียบหาดพัทยานะครับอ่าแล้วก็เป็นการรณรงค์ให้ผู้คนนั้นมีเพศสัมพันธ์แบบปลอดภัยก็คือใช้เรื่องของคอนดอมเข้ามานะครับอ่าหรือว่าอาจจะเป็นในเรื่องของถุงยางอนามัยเนี่ยนะครับมีการแจกด้วยนะครับจำนวนมากเลยที่บริเวณถนนริมหาดนะครับ So there you go. You have uh, lots of people helping out in distributing mm. condoms, creating awareness. Right. Children hopefully getting early education here about mm. the um, well about how to prevent exactly. STDs, for and example. Mm -hmm. And Thailand, you could say, has been one of the very many success cases mm -hmm. in terms of the countries around the world with decreasing numbers right. of AIDS. And if if you don't control it, it will be a very uh, severe. Right. Problem. In the 80s, 1980s, the It first was. cases mm -hmm. of AIDS were um, found among Thai and foreign gay and bisexual men mm -hmm. in the mid 80s. And after that, the epidemic took off, it seems. Right. But now, after a few years, a few decades mm -hmm. later, the 
disease has been able to be contained to a certain right. extent. And in mm -hmm. Thailand, of course, we'll have to say, proudly say, that researchers here have been pioneers behind an AIDS vaccine mm -hmm. that is impending, you could say, right. and is still, of course, in its second phase of research. But good news is that it's showing positive signs, mm -hmm. indeed. And if we can decrease it to uh, zero, right. then that perhaps uh, the ideal uh, objective. The ultimate uh, goal. Mm, the mm. ultimate goal of the society. But I think if we all, you know, try to prevent it and don't take risk, perhaps we can achieve that goal. Definitely not indeed. So difficult. here, of course, not only are they parading Cup. to create awareness, but they are also showing preventive measures uh, as well. Yes, นะครับหรือว่าแค่แค่ให้คนเค้ารู้ว่านี่คือวันเอชโรคเฉยๆแต่เค้ายังมีสอนวิธีการป้องกันนะครับไม่ให้โรคระบาดทางเพศเนี่
นะครับในประเทศหรืออาจจะเป็นเรื่องของอการละเมิดสิทธิมนุษยชนนะครับเป็นเรื่องของ human trafficking ด้วยนะครับก็ตรงนี้แหละจะเหมือนกับเข้ามาจัดการแก้ไขปัญหานี้ไปด้วยนะครับเพราะว่าก็ถ้าไปดูแล้วปีที่ผ่านมาคนที่แอปนี้อพยพเข้ามาเนี่ยก็มีปริมาณเยอะทีเดียวเป็นหมื่นคนเหมือนกันนะครับสองปัญหาเลย right so lots of progress indeed especially with Indonesia having a new leader at the helm this is definitely a move exactly. to create a lot of waves and create create lots of change yes there you go <laughs> So with that said, we go from Indonesia now over to Myanmar. Lots of action happening in Myanmar as well. As you could say, um, lots of protests have been happening all around ASEAN and in Myanmar. It's a no stranger to protests as well. Hundreds of protesters had gathered in Yangon, in the um, city there, the major city there, to demonstrate against a comment made recently by the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. He had used the word Rohingya in a statement to, to the ASEAN summit earlier in the month, and now the locals here are coming out to protest that statement, his comments, mm. asking him to take it back. มาเรื่องนี้เรื่องใหญ่ครับท่านผู้ชมครับจาก mm. ทางด้านอินโดนีเซียนะครับกลับเข้ามาดูในประเทศเพื่อนบ้านของไทยเราก็คือเมียนมานั่นเองนะครับล่าสุดก็มีเกิดการประท้วงขึ้นในเมียนมานะครับโดยครั้งนี้เนี่ยนะครับการประท้วงนั้นเกิดขึ้นเพราะว่ากลุ่มของผู้ชุมนุมหรือว่าโปรเทสเตอร์นั้นไม่พอใจนะครับคำกล่าวของเลขาธิการขององค์การสหประชาชาติหรือว่านายบันคีมุนนั่นเองนะครับ mm, Right and you see here that still tension exists between Buddhists for example and Buddhist monks and others as well but uh, the recent comment that uh, Ban Ki Moon made was that he uh, despite the democratization the move towards democratization of Myanmar it seems that the government should still ensure that the Rohingya people have humanitarian access in a nutshell that is what he said mm -hmm. so despite um, that uh, comment it seems locals have come out to protest his use of that word the Rohingya Muslims are a very small minority mm -hmm. in the predominantly Buddhist Myanmar and uh, so there you have lots of demonstrators marching protesting his comments to show you how indeed the tension is right. still quite uh, you could say tangible ครับคำกล่าวของคุณบันคีมุนเนี่ยนะครับซึ่งเป็นเลขาธิการของ UN หรือองค์การสหประชาชาติก็ไปทำให้ชาวเมียนมานั้นไม่พอใจนะครับเพราะว่าเขามีความได้กล่าวแสดงความเป็นห่วงต่อชาวโรฮิงญานะครับว่าอาจจะต้องเจอการแบกแยกกิจการจากรัฐบาลของเมียนมานะครับซึ่งชาวโรฮิงญาถือเป็นกลุ่มคนส่วนน้อยนะครับแล้วก็ชาวเมียนมาก็เป็นกลุ่มคนส่วนใหญ่ที่นับถือศาสนาพุทธด้วยนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นเรื่องนี้ก็เลยทําให้เกิดความไม่พอใจต่อคํากล่าวนะครับก็อาจจะมีถึงขั้นให้อย่าใช้ทบทวนนะครับเรื่องที่ได้กล่าวไปด้วยนะครับ Right there you go so still still lots of divisions within Myanmar which is one challenge Myanmar has to overcome very soon in its various um, you could say multi ethnic Right, it's a challenge. Right, indeed. definitely a challenge. Talking about another challenge that has been overcome, mm -hmm. you could say, between China and Vietnam, we talked about divisions in Myanmar, but now a new railway linking China and Vietnam will bridge the gap between wow. the two countries and promote not just trade, but of course also cultural exchange mm -hmm. and promote really ASEAN. Right, that's a very good sign. Yes, uh, definitely we. I mean, at least uh, the Vietnamese and uh, sorry, the Vietnamese and the Chinese going to have much brighter future with this uh, link. Definitely, it's a first international railway passage here linking Southwest China's Yunnan Province and Vietnam, and it went into operation. It launched pretty much opened this week. ครับมาดูเรื่องนี้นะครับที่4ของวันนี้แล้วนะครับไปดูที่เวียดนามกันบ้างครับข่าวดีครับข่าวดีของเวียดนามก็คือมีการสร้างรถไฟนะครับเชื่อมกับจีนได้สําเร็จแล้วนะครับเป็นแห่งแรกเลยทีเดียวนะครับซึ่งก็จะไปเชื่อมกับประเทศจีนที่บริเวณยูนนานนั่นเองนะครับถือว่าตอนนี้เนี่ยมีการเริ่มวางตัวรางแล้วก็ถือว่าน่าสนใจนะครับ Right Well it seems the train itself the railway runs 141 kilometers long shortening travel time between the capital city provincial capital city of Kunming and Heku To five and a half hours from the previous 18. The last time I was in Kunming, it wow. was a very, very, you could say, um, removed, isolate city, and uh, there wasn't much going on. But now, so only five 
and a half totally hours. Totally developed. Yes, five and a half. And previously, it it took eighteen. Eighteen. That's almost a day. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. So oh, linking Yunnan's Mengzi County <coughs> and the Vietnam-China border county oh, of Hiko. ตอนนี้เราพูดถึงเรื่องรถไฟในเวียดนามคือไทยเราก็กําลังจะสร้างแต่เวียดนามเขาเรียบร้อยคือกําลังสร้างแล้วเลยนะครับกําลังเริ่มวางตัวรางแล้วแล้วก็ความยาวทั้งสิ้น141กิโลเมตรนะครับเป็นการเชื่อมนะครับเมืองเฮกูนะครับของเวียดนามไปยังคุนหมิงนะครับชื่อที่เราคุ้นเคยกันดีซึ่งก่อนหน้านี้ใช้เวลาถึง18ชั่วโมงตอนนี้นะครับเห็นว่าถ้าเสร็จเนี่ยนะครับในเดือนธันวานี้ก็จะใช้เวลาแค่5ชั่วโมงครึ่ง That so, saves a lot of time. That's amazing. Not just that; it doesn't end just there. It will continue on. This is a part of a bigger project that runs. It's called the Eastern Line of the mm-hmm. Planned Pan Asia Railway Network. It's an international railway project that Brilliant. will run through not just Kunming, the capital of Yunnan, mm-hmm. and pass through cities of Yuchi, Mengzi, mm-hmm. also Heko in Yunnan, mm-hmm. and link with Vietnam, Laos. Thailand, even Singapore. That's brilliant. So pretty soon we'll be able to travel Pan Asia very mm. quickly within hours. So y a l So in the future we can go, uh, we can travel to Laos and then connect to Vietnam and then to China. Right, and then Singapore. Oh, oh, oh. like who a dream, tra- like, a, like a dream comes true. Right, who needs planes anymore? Right, we'll just take the train. Yes, and it's nice too because, oh, dear viewers, if you look at the train of the Vietnam that they built for China, it will go to many cities in Vietnam. ลิงก์มาที่ลาวไทยแล้วก็ลงไปสิงคโปร์เพราะฉะนั้นต่อไปเนี่ยถ้าถ้าคนไทยยกตัวอย่างอยากจะวางแผนไปเที่ยวประเทศจีนเนี่ยสามารถไปเที่ยวลาวก่อนได้แล้วแวะไปเที่ยวเวียดนามต่อแล้วแวะไปเที่ยวจีนอีกรอบโอ้ right. oh, สุดยอดเลย and it wouldn't take much time uh, to complete this I mean whole trip only five hours and a half <laughs> yeah so from Thailand to Laos and then to Vietnam and to Uh, China, right. four countries, maybe just a week. So there you go. Oh, well, yeah. right now though, the train itself is just uh, carrying cargo, mm-hmm. freight. But in mid-December, mm-hmm. they will continue to operate passenger trains as well. Good news. There We hope go. we have more of this. Yes, definitely. In the future. All right. Cup. Some uh. good thoughts right there for travelers and tourists in Cup. the future. And with that said, let's take a short break. When we come back, more coming up ahead in the ASEAN calendar. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In coming up in the ASEAN calendar, lots of great events ahead in terms of culture, tradition, and religion as well. ครับในช่วงนี้นะครับเป็นช่วงปฏิทินอาเซียนหรือว่าอาเซียนคาลเลนเดอร์นั่นเองนะครับกิจกรรมหลากหลายที่น่าสนใจที่เกิดขึ้นรอบๆอาเซียนท่านผู้ชมสามารถติดตามได้เลยนะครับ So let's find out what's up ahead. ASEAN calendar. Monkeys feast on fruits and vegetables at Thailand Festival. Thousands of macaques in Thailand's l o p b u r i Province were treated to a feast on Sunday. Trays of vegetables, fruits, and desserts created especially for them were laid out in Phrang Sam Yat, an ancient ruin. On the side of the road in downtown Lopburi, where they've lived for decades. Hundreds of monkeys pushed and shoved, fighting to get to the treats. The annual event held on last Sunday in November is sponsored by local business owners who believe monkeys bring good fortune and prosperity to l o p b u r i I think there's a lot of monkey business going on here today. Um, I'm not I'm not sure how many there are, but there's a lot and they're hungry. It was first held in 1989 as a way to attract more tourists to the temples, which date back to the 10th century. This year, 400,000 baht, equivalent to 12,000 U.S. dollars, was spent on food, including two tons of fruits and nearly a ton of vegetables, 
a total of around two and a half tons. There are four sittings at the buffet, so that all the monkeys in the town can get their fill, and so tourists can have the opportunity to watch them dine in style. Thailand's military holds annual multicolor parade ahead of King's birthday. Thailand's military royal guards don colorful uniforms as they walk to the parade on Tuesday in honor of King Pumipon Adunyadev as part of his 87th birthday celebrations. The ceremony, also known as Trooping of the Colors, is held annually on December 2nd, three days ahead of the King's birthday on December 5th. The Parade of the Royal Guards, the King's own bodyguards, also include an oath-taking ceremony, where the military take the oath of allegiance to the King. The king is revered by many ties, and his portrait hangs in every government building and in many shops and homes. Crowds gathered to watch the ceremony and express concern over King Pumipun's health after he was admitted to hospital last month. Six-month-old Wen Ti Han was born with a facial malfunction known as a cleft lip. She was among hundreds of children born with a cleft lip and cleft palate to be treated by Operation Smile during their Vietnam mega mission in November to mark the 25th year of their presence in the country since 1989. Formed in 1982 by Bill and Kathleen McGee, the U.S. Virginia-based medical charity group has operated on more than 220,000 children born with a cleft lip and palate in 60 different countries, according to the Operation Smile website. Every day in medicine, we get the privilege to put our hand on another person's shoulder and make their problem our problem. She showed them love. If we can learn to do that more in every time in our lives, every day of our lives, we'll be happier people and we'll make other people happier people. It's selfish in a way, but we've got to get back to the basics of what makes us feel good. And that's what, to me, Operation Smile is. It's just using our talent to help somebody else have a little smile on their face. It started with a trip to the Philippines, where the McGees and their fellow medical volunteers helped children, but were forced to turn away hundreds because they did not have enough manpower to help everyone. to be able to treat a kid. But if you prevent it altogether, that's even better. So with technology, we're able to learn from our patients. Our patients have a richness of, of, of lessons that they can give us. So if, if we know that the genes that are an eclectic and patient are only triggered by specific things, 
then I'm able to prevent those things. The Operation Smile website notes that the cause of a cleft lip or palate is unknown, though doctors believe it could stem from a combination of genetic and environmental factors. A child born with a cleft condition may have problems breathing, eating, and with speech development. Since then, Operation Smile has grown to an organization with over 5,400 volunteers worldwide. We have a very colorful calendar for December. And with that said, we'll take another short break. When we come back, up ahead in the ASEAN interview is a talk about the famous National Museum of Singapore. Stay tuned. Now, in ASEAN interview, we'll learn up ahead about lots of interesting details mm -hmm. about the National Museum of Singapore, its right. ins and outs, and all of its colors. Mm, I believe that there's lots of things to learn from this museum. Right, so let's listen. In the 700-year Singapore exhibition, the show itself is divided into six periods of time, starting with archaeology in Singapore. And we know it's too many. Archaeologists have been quietly excavating in Singapore for the past three decades. Since 1984, some 19 sites were excavated and many others surveyed. Archaeology has added to another layer to our understanding of Singapore's ancients, colonials, and more recent past. This section showcases a part of the large collection of archaeological artifacts that have been unearthed over the years. Some of these artifacts date to as early as the 10th century AD. In this section, we bring you to an understanding of what is archaeology and showcases some of significant archaeological sites and artifacts in Singapore. The second one is Ancient Singapore. Ancient Singapore was known variously as Temasek in Singapore among other names. In this section, you can learn more about legendary five Malay kings who ruled over a prosperous trading settlement until the Javanese invaded the island and laid it to waste. Until today, there's still a mystery of Pyramid Vera and Iskandar Shan, and the legendary lion that gave the island its name. Colonial Singapore the arrival of the British in 1819 was central to the lays of Singapore as a regional trading hub. After setting up a factory on the island, they then secured right to the island from the Malay ruler and developed Singapore into a thriving port and premier city, which attracted migrants from all over the world. And in this section, it shows you how the different communities live and work side by side. The fourth gallery is Chonanto. On 15 February 1942, Singapore came under a new master, Japan. The city was renamed Shonanto, which means the light of the south. In this section, you will experience the life of people at the time, such as the fear of mass skinning exercise, the lack of food and supply, and learning how to be Japanese in school. Walk into a Changi prison cell and see how prisoners of war survived those years. Road to Merdeka. Post-war Singapore was a time of rebuilding and revolution. The war left Singapore in chambers. There were problems of unemployment, poverty, and poor living conditions. At the same time, the spirit of nationalism had emerged. 
In this section, it will take you through a student demonstration and listen to the former student share about their involvement. You can learn how they were assaulted by election fever, about the political party and their ideologies. You can participate in the referendum that shaped Singapore collective national consciousness. Here is the last section: Independent Singapore. Singapore's first 10 years of nation building was a time of hard work and achievement. Explore how the foundation of Singapore nation were built, such as the foreign policy, economy, education, and housing. You can visit the 1970-inspired HDB living room, read magazine, and watch news reels from the time. You can have fun at the void deck and relive moments of your childhood at the playground. Uh, this museum is 127 years old and it has always been a museum throughout this period of time and the purpose of this museum is to showcase uh, the history of Singapore but we also have besides exhibitions, uh, programming, and also educational programs as well. Uh, the Singapore 700 years exhibition uh, is an interim exhibition uh, because the permanent galleries of the museum are closed for re revamp uh, in conjunction with the 50th year of Singapore's independence next year. So this exhibition uh, is a temporary exhibition in the meantime to let visitors uh, know about the history of Singapore from the 1300s uh, right up to the 1970s. And we see how Singapore has uh, developed from a uh, uh, pre-colonial trading kingdom into a modern uh, developed city-state today. Uh, this exhibition uh, is relevant to the people of ASEAN because uh, many parts of the exhibition show our connectedness to the region. Uh, for example, in the pre-colonial section that we have here, the archaeological artifacts, it shows that we have uh, extensive trading connections with Southeast Asia. And also in the other parts of the exhibition, uh, we show that Singapore has also been connected with Southeast Asia in one way or another, either to trade, yeah. through other forms of uh, interaction. Uh, the, as you know, Singapore uh, is a country with many types of immigrants who have come from many parts of the world including uh, Southeast Asia and in the exhibition uh, we also uh, showcase the life of these communities here for example the Chinese, the Malays, uh, the Indians as well as the Europeans during the colonial period. Okay, uh, they will get an idea of how Singapore is connected to Southeast Asia. Uh, they can see many things, for example, in Thailand, they can see some of the Thai uh, ceramics on display here, which shows our connection with uh, Thai history. In the colonial period, they can also see the trading connections uh, from Southeast Asia to Singapore. How all this helped to make Singapore a prosperous anthropod. Uh, in the 19th and 20th centuries.
All right, and with that said, we've learned lots more about the National Museum of Singapore. Anybody in the country do plan on visiting. Mm -hmm. With that said, we've run out of time now on ASEAN Challenge. We'll see you again soon and hope you have a great holiday. For now, สวัสดีค่ะ